Yo, you guys remember the creepy porn lawyer? Yeah, Stormy Daniels. Was that that fucking horse face cunt's name? Yeah, no. That was uh his meal ticket. His designated salt lick. And guess what? He went from being, oh yeah, somebody who CNN was trying to push as being one of the uh, Democratic hopefuls for 2020. No shit. Go back and take a look at some of the old coverage. To being somebody who's going to end up being uh, somebody's fucking bartering chip for a carton of cigarettes in the pen. He's going away for two and a half years for trying to extort Nike. Funny story. Great end. Couldn't happen to a nicer man. Michael Avenatti sentenced to 30 months in prison for trying to extort Nike. Sucks to suck. A judge on Thursday afternoon handed down a 30-month prison sentence to disgraced attorney Michael Avenatti, who rose to national prominence purely by casting himself as a left-wing champion fighting former President Donald Trump for attempting to escape. Nike for up to 25 million dollars. Now, why did he think he was entitled to that? We'll get into it. Avenatti's punishment is less than the 9 to 11 year range per federal guidelines. Why? And is likely to disappoint federal prosecutors who sought a substantial sentence. See, at the end of the day, he has the right political ideas. So yeah, he's going to get off because the kangaroo courts are very much a thing at this point. Michael Avenatti, or Mr. Avenatti's conduct was outrageous, stated Judge Paul Gardfee, sure, said in U.S. District Court in Manhattan. See where the court case was also held? Yeah, in Manhattan. So there you go. There's your fucking answer. He hijacked his client's claims and he used him to further his own agenda, which is to extort Nike for millions of dollars for himself. He outright betrayed his client, the judge added. Mr. Avenatti had become drunk on the power of his platform, or what he perceived the power of his platform to be. A false idol on the left? Oh my god, tell, is, say it isn't so. Avenatti broke into tears while addressing the court ahead of his sentencing. Stop crying, you bitch. Saying, I am truly sorry for all the pain I caused. Well, you're about to receive a hell of a lot more pain where you're going. I alone have destroyed my career, my relationships, and my life, and there is no doubt I need to pay. Now you'll be making recompense several inches at a time, buddy. Criminal fraud charges on two coasts disrupted Evanati's rapid ascent to fame. He was... Oh, he also faces the start of a fraud trial next week in the Los Angeles area, a second California criminal trial later this year, and a separate trial next year in Manhattan, where he is charged with cheating Daniels out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Avenatti represented Daniels in the 2018 lawsuit against Trump, appearing often on cable news programs to disparage the Republican president. Avenatti explored running against Trump in 2020, boasting that he would have no problem raising money. See, guys, all you have to do is just listen to these grifters because they will tell you exactly what their motivations are. They aren't as smart as they think they are. Daniel said a tryst with Trump a decade earlier resulted in her being paid $130,000 by Trump's personal lawyer in 2016 to stay silent. Trump denied the affair and that led to the entire Michael Cohen situation and what came out of that? Uh, really nothing other than a bunch of funny tweets. So yeah, nah, who gives a shit? Finally, this story... Eh, it wasn't really much of a story because everybody could see that he was kind of a fucking little sleazeball and nobody really should have paid him much attention. But this story came up. He's going to jail. He's likely going to be staying in jail for a little bit longer too. Or maybe he's just going to have to bounce different coasts and spend time in different pens and maybe make some new friends wherever he goes. But couldn't happen to a nicer guy who, even though he was trying to take money from Nike, I have a little bit of sympathy to the fact that he was at least trying to take from that fucking corrupt organization. But considering the actor on the other end of it, yeah, not a whole lot of sympathy on that one. But let's talk a little bit more about the prosecutorial wing of the government being complete and utter shitbag, shall we? Schaller substitute studies, their social studies teacher charged in U.S. Capitol riot. <gasps> oh my God, what did he do? A substitute teacher in the Schaller area school district has been charged in connection with the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. The latest Pittsburgh area resident to be accused of federal crimes along with 500 or so other people arrested so far. FBI agents from the Pittsburgh office arrested Robert Moores on Friday on charges of assaulting officers. <gasps> Civil disorder. Oh my God robbery of personal property what of the u.s and obstruction of an official proceeding <gasps> oh my god the fbi said mr morris a day-to-day -day substitute studies 
the social studies teacher who lives in Glenshaw is seen in multiple videos fighting with police. Oh my God. Well, what did he do? Did he cause any harm? Let's see. In the mo in most of the videos, he is wearing tan camouflage coat clothing with a tactical style vest. <gasps> Scissors tucked into the front of his vest. Oh my God, are those assault scissors? Somebody should confiscate those because we need to have sensible and honest scissor control laws on the books. And at times, a mega cap, the biggest offense of them all. As you can see there, yeah, he was just having a fucking laugh. He had a, what, like, a, I see these all the time up here in Grand Prairie, just a fucking Under Armour camouflage long sleeve shirt and yeah he had a little larper's vest cool bro i don't know what they have highlighted here obviously the top one is scissors durr but I, like what he's got stuff in pockets okay video shows him near the front of the line of riders who pushed past police guarding the capitol <gasps> oh my god he should have went in with the other ones who were invited in organizing a shield wall what's that is that like when antifa gets together and they actually have shields or was it just a bunch of boomers standing in a line probably the latter in an attack on officers in the lower west terrace tunnel and then entering the building through a broken window oh my god it must have been a big old window if it was an entire shield wall they got through it Fucking Christ. At one point, Mr. Morris is seen grabbing an officer's baton and trying to rip it away. <gasps> Agents said in an affidavit. Okay, well, if they have video footage of that, they should be able to prove that he was trying to grab away a baton. But, oh, okay, cool. He's also seen reaching through a crowd and grabbing a fence. Oh, my God. You should probably lock him away forever. He was trying to assault that fence. What did that fence ever do to him? Being held by a police officer to keep the crowd back and then ripping the fence out of the hands of the officer with the assistance of other riders. So not him alone. It was instead a whole host of people. Okay. He is seen retreating into the crowd with the fence. Ha! Huh. Got him. So why is this important? Because this one just kind of reads like every other one of these, for lack of a better term, boomers that just showed up to the Capitol building. Like, okay, he's pictured there outside the Capitol with a whole bunch of other people that are standing on the steps of the Capitol. Not really doing anything illegal, uh, not breaking any windows. I don't see anything wrong with that picture there whatsoever. But clearly, if the FBI's on the case, you know that everything's on the up and up. Yeah, especially when they went to go arrest him at his house and see some of his property. I kid you not. I kid you not. This is what they're trying to base all of their claims off of. It is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. And I'm not being hyperbolic on this one. They are trying to accuse him of setting up an elaborate plan because they seized a Lego set of the U.S. Capitol from his house. Yeah, he was clearly planning this fucking terroristic raid okay <laughs> fbi sees lego set from dc riot leader he was a riot leader guys even though we went through the pittsburgh gazette article beforehand because uh, this is this is just high comedy the way that they write this and look at how mad and scary ross or morse looks in this one oh my god he's clearly deranged along with a notebook containing step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a hometown militia We'll get to that. FBI agent seized a fully constructed U.S. Capitol Lego set. <gasps> oh my god. And it's so accurate that he knew exactly which offices inside that little Lego statue would, ho would house each individual member of Congress. Oh my god. And you'll see with that and his little notebook in tandem. Oh my god, this guy was clearly, he was one of those high up people and one of those militias that definitely broke in and they were just armed to the tits, right? Oh right, no firearms were there that day, except for the ones that the Capitol Hill had. Okay. Capitol Hill Police, sorry. They had, yeah. Prosecutors charged that Robert Morse, 27 years old, oh my god, that's what they do, they get them when they're young, man directed fellow riders doing one of the most intense and prolonged clashes with law enforcement officers who were seeking to prevent a violent mob from entering the capital through the doors of the lower west terrace this was written july 6th and i can't believe they're still trying to use or get away with this inflammatory rhetoric but yeah there we go morse wearing tactical gear tactical gear maybe they're tactical scissors and a mega hat oh my god was it a reinforced mega hat could it withstand a tactical blast? I hope so. 
That's what they make it out to seem like it's so terrible. <gasps> Allegedly ripped a riot shield from the hands of Metropolitan Police Department. Or a fence. Or he was standing shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of other out of shape dudes carrying a Trump or an American flag. Uh, something like that. But yeah, no, he, he ripped a riot shield. Could have at least said baton, but okay. That later organized a shield wall that was used to crush officers in the rioters' path. Oh, really? Was he a part of that one video that we seen of somebody who was squished? Who didn't die afterwards, who didn't have any long-term effects of it, but, um, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a harrowing thing. Oh, and they even go ahead and describe it as such, as seen in the harrowing video. A rioter, oh, as rioters chanting, not necessarily saying he was a part of it, but it, rioters chanted this because this is the one instance they can point to. Heave ho in unison. MPD officer Daniel Hodges was crushed against the door jam as Donald Trump supporters like Morse, like Morse, not Morse, like Morse, gotta hate these people, sought to storm the Capitol and pose for photo ops for CNN. Okay. Okay. As Hodges screamed in pain, a rider tore off the cop's gas mask and took his baton, which was then used to strike an immobilized officer. Again, is this Morse? No? Okay. Morris, who graduated from Penn State after serving as an Army Ranger, was indicted last month on nine criminal counts related to his activities on January 6th. Morris, who recently worked as a substitute teacher, came prepared for violence just in case a fucking art project broke out. Okay. And then repeatedly led the violent mob attacking. Oh, he led the mob. Oh, okay. If that guy has a tactical vest. We should follow him where he's going. After attempting to breach the Capitol through the Lower West Terrace entrance, Morse subsequently climbed into the building through a broken window. And here's where we get into his notebook that was so diabolical. In the July 2nd motion, government lawyers reported the agents found a notebook in Morse's car that contained writings that included a step-by-step uh, -step to create hometown militia. What does that mean? The militia to-do list included steps like ambush and battle drills and reminders to bring assault rifle and four magazines. Did he do any of that? No. Are they describing what's in the notebook other than just a few words? No. Are they trying to drum up some kind of a fucking scenario through this article? Very much so, and written with full 100% sincerity. Investigators also seized clothing and other items matching the, uh, those that Morse carried on January 6th, including a Don't Tread on Me flag, obviously a mark of a white supremacist, military fatigues, a black tourniquet, and a military utility bag. Morse also had three different firearms, including a handgun, a shotgun, and a rifle. As you can see, he was pictured with all three FBI agents who raided Morse's suburban uh, Pittsburgh residence also recovered a fully constructed U.S. Capitol Lego set. The court filing does not indicate whether feder federal investigators believe that Morse used the 1,032-piece Lego set in preparation of his alleged rampaging on January 6th. Smoking gun, you should put it in your mouth. And then just to wrap it up, sort of a trifecta of hilarious legal goings on, shall we? Kind of piggybacks off of Trump's lawsuit, which we made mention of yesterday that uh, he's going after Twitter, Facebook, and Google. And now Google is hit with a suit by 36 state attorney generals, including Washington, over alleged antitrust violations. It seems to be happening more and more frequently. And I don't know what to make of this, mostly because these antitrust suits tend to just die on the vine. But let's see where this goes. Google was hit by a lawsuit from a group of state attorneys on January 6th over alleged violations of antitrust laws by its Android app store. Attorney generals for 36 states and Washington are suing the big tech company in a 144-page complaint filed in the Northern California Federal Court. The group alleges that Google's Play Store for Android apps violates antitrust laws. The complaint centers on the control Google is able to exert on the digital play or on the Play Store, sorry, allowing its to collect commissions of up to 30% on digital transactions within apps installed on the Android-powered smartphones. Those devices represent more than 80% of the worldwide smartphone market. Okay. This doesn't really strike me as a monopolistic practice, but okay. 
led by Utah, North Carolina, Tennessee, New York, Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, and Nebraska. The filing marks the fourth major antitrust lawsuit filed by the United States government agencies against the company since October of 2020. And how have all of them gone so far? Either dismissed or just pushed off into the ether because nothing will ever happen to these companies, mostly because these lawsuits have to be filed in Northern California, which is very, very preferential in their treatment of these big tech companies. Because all you need to do is just follow the money, okay? Who does Google, Facebook, Amazon, and just name your favorite big tech overlord company. Who do they overwhelmingly support financially and with their practices? Exactly, exactly why they will never get comeuppance in court or in Congress. The complaint contends that Google has deployed various tactics to set up the comp or anti-competitive uh, barriers to ensure it distributes more than 90% of the apps on the Android device, a market share that Attorney General argues represents an illegal monopoly. And eh, not really. There's the Galaxy Store for Samsung. Amazon was running an app store for a while. I'm not sure if it's still open or not, but I think this is definitely the wrong way to be going about this. You should be going after them for their actual policies, but we'll see where this one goes. I don't really have a whole hell of a lot of hope on it, even though it does have a whole host of attorney generals from, I guess, both sides of the aisle. I just don't see this one really going anywhere. It also alleges that Google is abusing the power to reap billions of dollars in profit at the expense of consumers who end up paying higher prices to subsidize the commissions and the maker of the apps who have less money and incentive to innovate. That's such a weak claim. I hate this lawsuit. Hopefully it fails and fucking all of these people can go back to the fucking drawing board. Sorry to end on a downer, but uh, the first two were funny, right? Fucking Lego set. Oh my God. Can you believe that? But with that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Catch y'all later.